Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about cervix ultrasound. The cervix is the lower end of the uterus. It is often overlooked when scanning, but it is important to view it. These are transvaginal images of the cervix in longitudinal view. The internal loss is the junction between the body of the uterus and the cervix. It is the upper part of the cervix and will be seen on the left side in the image. The external loss is the junction between the cervix and the vagina. It will be seen on the right side in the image. And this area between the internal loss and the external loss is the endocervical canal. In this image, we can see some fluid in the endocervical canal. Nebothian cysts are benign cysts and usually occur after the cervix heals from chronic cervicitis. We will see anechoic cysts near the endocervical canal. Some cysts may have internal echoes. On color Doppler, we will not see any internal flow. We can see three cysts here. Here is another image showing a single Nebothian cyst near the endocervical canal. Dilated endocervical glands will have a multicystic tubular appearance. This appearance is also called cystic endocervical mucus. You can see a difference in appearance of the cervical canal. Cervical polyp refers to a well-defined circumscribed mass within the endocervical canal. A polyp is attached to the wall of the cervix with a stalk, but this stalk is hard to see on ultrasound. This mass can appear either hyperechoic or hypoechoic, but mostly it is hyperechoic to the myometrium. This is another case of a cervical polyp. It is a well circumscribed round hyperechoic mass in the cervix. A fibroid can also be found in the cervix. It will appear hypoechoic mostly, but it can also appear isoechoic or hyperechoic and even heterogeneous. In cervical incompetence, the cervix becomes dilated and this can cause second trimester pregnancy failure. The cervical loss will be open and become widened. This widening is called funneling. This is due to bulging of fetal membranes into the internal cervical os. The appearance of the cervical os can have an hourglass appearance. It looks like this. In severe cases, fetal parts or even the umbilical cord may also be found in the cervix. Here is another image of cervical incompetence. This is the dilated cervix and this is funneling. Cervical length is the distance between internal and external os. It is measured by placing one caliper on the internal os and the other caliper on the external os. The normal cervical length is around 4 cm till 37 weeks and less than 3 cm at 32 weeks for twin pregnancies. A short cervix is suggestive of cervical incompetence. The cervical length will be less than 2.5 cm. Visually, we can see that the cervix here is much shorter than the cervix in the normal image. And this is the fetal head. Cervical stenosis is the abnormal narrowing of the cervix. On ultrasound, it is difficult to diagnose it, but we may see some endometrial fluid and a large fluid collection with internal echoes in the endocervical canal. Cervical cancer is also difficult to see on ultrasound and sonography is not reliable for it. If the mass is large enough, we may see an irregularly shaped hypoechoic mass in the cervix. On Doppler, this mass will have internal vascularity. Here, power Doppler is used 
and we can see many areas of vascularity. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.